Investigation raises questions about Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and the Transcendental Meditation Organization's financial dealings. Part 1, Money Flows to India This video is an August 17, 2023 presentation by David Laird on the publicly available finances of the TM movement in various countries around the world. David presents the facts he has been able to find and leaves you to make up your own mind as to the conclusions to be drawn. David learned to meditate in 1971, worked on staff in Seelisburg for four months, then did TM teacher training in 1974. He was briefly one of four regional coordinators for the UK TM organization. In 1978, he joined The Economist and eventually became commercial director of The Economist Group, a £300 million global media company. During a 30-year career, he held various positions in sales, marketing and senior management in the UK, Europe and the USA. Under his leadership, CFO Publishing, a Boston-based media company, saw revenues increase from $6 million to $43 million in 10 years. More recently, he served on the Peace Palace Advisory Board and has designed and written a number of publications for new meditators, including the Perspectives newsletter, which was recently reprinted. So first of all, following the money. What This is basically the spreadsheet that I work from. And what it is, is um, a look over a period of time from 1997 to the present, or as close as we can get, at some of the major TMO organizations, the ones that um, actually published um, accounts. And so we're looking at the Brahmananda Sarasvati Foundation, the Global Country of World Peace, Raj Ram Foundation, Maharishi Global Development Fund, Brahmananda Sarasvati Yagya Foundation, Maharishi Vedic Education Development, and the Brahmananda Sarasvati Trust out of, um, out of the Netherlands. And to, to simplify matters, to give a big picture, I, I looked at three areas. One, the grants that were received, the grants that were paid out, and the company's net, uh, the organization's net assets. And the little boxes and comments you see are my attempt to, um, to determine where the money went and which uh, bits of the world and which organizations received the lion's share of the grants and donations. So to look at that in a little bit more detail, um, of the major entities, the biggest by far was the Maharishi Global Development Fund, uh, which was probably active before 1997, but uh, that was as far back as I could go. Uh, at one point, it had maximum net assets of 241 million. Uh, that was in 2000, so worth quite a bit more now. It paid out 363 million in grants most of it going to Brahman and Aswari Saraswati Trust in um, CI stands for Channel Islands. So uh, an offshore um, UK account. Um, and some, some went all through the Global Council of World Peace. Um, the Brahman and Saraswati Foundation actually took over as a major organization from the Maharishi Global Development Fund. Um, its maximum net assets were nowhere near as big, although they're growing, nearly 100 million there last year. They paid out 63 million to South Asia. We were unable to tell exactly where it went, although we do know that 22 million went to um, Girisha's organization, the Maharishi Vig Vigyan. Global Country of World Peace, um, they paid out 56 million. Um, IA Invincibility America, that, main, that was mainly from um, Howard Settle, and it went to support people who participated in the Invincible America Assembly in Fairfield. Uh, the Brahmananda Saraswati Yagya Foundation, a fairly recent um, setup, um, it's paid out 35 million, again to South Asia, and we don't really know where. Maharishi Vedic Universities, they've stopped being active quite a while ago, but they, uh, over their lifespan, paid out 35 million. Uh, most of that went to the Maharishi Global Development Fund, which was then paid on to other entities. And the Brahmananda Swarasvati Trust in the Channel Islands, um, very little information about that because it's an offshore account. They're not required to publish any details. 
But we do know from other records that 13 million went to the Marshi Dag Vigyan and another four to the Swami Brahmananda Sarasvati Charitable Trust. And finally, the Brahmananda Sarasvati Trust out of the Netherlands, um, it's paid out a, a relatively minor 12 million. And again, most of that, in fact, all of that went to Marshi Dag Vigyan. So in total grants from 1997 to present, uh, around 550 million, allowing for a little bit of double counting when um, it gets transferred to one organization before it reaches its final destination. So of the money that went to India, this is what it looks like. These are the probable grants to India and Nepal from 96 to 2021. So it amounts to around about 344 million, which is um, a tidy chunk of change. Um, so looking at India more closely, very difficult to get a picture of what goes on in India, as most of us have discovered. Um, a couple of years ago, I tried to, uh, I had my first attempt to um, figure out what happened to the cash in India. Um, and I was able to look at the Brahmananda Sarasvati Foundation in the US, look at their grants to South Asia. But once it gets to India, nothing. We don't know which organizations it went to, and therefore we're not able to trace um, the financials. The Brahmananda Saraswati Yagya Foundation, also from the States, is a little bit more transparent. They paid out 6.1 million in 2019, which went to the Maharishi Raj Ram Vedic Education, for which there are limited financial records, and to the Maharishi Vedic Institute in Nepal, for which I could determine um, no records. From Europe, Brahmananda Saraswati Trust, a relatively small 1.8 million. And we know that went to the Maharishi Ved Vigyan, but we don't know what happened once it got there because, again, no accounts are available. So, um, one of the ways to get more detailed information is to refer to the work of an organization in India called the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. And they publish a handbook every year, or they did. They have stopped doing it recently because the government decided it wanted to curb transparency in this area. But for a while, they published um, accounts. And so we were able to um, dig up the top foreign donors to India from throughout the world between 96 and 99. Um, and as you can see, Maharishi Ayurved Trust was number six. And uh, the Age of Enlightenment Trust uh, was uh, number 15. So looking, drilling down a little bit into that, and the Marshi Ayurveda Trust over that period, over those four years, gave a total of 21.4 million. And if you look at the um, small print, it said the Charity Commission from England and Wales maintains a register, but they couldn't find an exact match. Well, of course, that's because they were based in the Channel Islands, the offshore tax haven, and um, no, no accounts um, need to be produced. The Age of Enlightenment Trust over, those, uh, over three of those years gave 11.5 million. Again, no specific information found, again, based in Channel Islands. And similarly, the Maharishi Education Foundation, which gave 4.6 million. Um, so where did it go? Well, the top recipients uh, from in, in those four years, as you can see, the number one recipient was Maharishi Ved Vigyan. So it received more money from international sources than any other Indian organization in that period of time. And also in the top 30, the SRM Foundation of India and um, the Maharishi Gandharved, the Vishva Vijapetam. So there's uh, quite a lot flowing into the Maharishi organizations. Um, the Ved Vigyan, you can see, received 28 million over those four years. Um, and it points out in the notes that it was linked um, to the Maharishi Global Development Fund which at that point had a uh, had net assets of 290 million. It was a very wealthy organization. Um, but we don't actually know where the money came from. 
the SRM Foundation, um, 6.1 million, and the MGVV, um, 2.9 million. So we were able to find some details from two, for 2001. And again, the Marshi Ayurved Trust was um, in the top 10 donors. And Maharishi Veg Vigyan was in the top 10 recipients. And I, I don't know whether it's significant or not, but if you look at the affiliations, um, the uh, Maharishi Veg Vigyan was the leading recipient of donations uh, from a, a Hindu affiliation. Whether that gained any leverage or not is, is not really for me to say. So looking at the organizations in India, um, the two that are featured most prominently on the website are the Maharishi Ved Vigyan and the Vidya Mandir Schools Group. So uh, a little bit of a closer look at those to the extent that it's possible. The Maharishi Ved Vigyan um, claims from 1982 to have trained over 62,000 Vedic pundits and scholars. And this year, um, some promotional materials said that in the Brahmastan, they now have, this is from Harris Kaplan, they now have 1,400 and throughout India, uh, three and a half thousand. So the question that naturally arises there with 62,000 trained pundits, why do they only have three and a half thousand currently active? Why haven't they been able to find the 9,000 that they needed? to create permanent world peace. And what happens to these trained pundits? Um, they obviously don't work for uh, Maharishi organizations. Do they find employment elsewhere? Do they drop out? Um, you know, if Arthur Conan Doyle is writing a book, he'd be calling it the, the case of the missing pundits. Um, this was also something sent out by uh, Harris Kaplan to donors, to donors to um, various Indian causes, the pundits. And it summarizes how the donations were utilized. The thing that's interesting is that it relies exclusively on percentages and doesn't actually specify the dollar amounts. So we don't know how much we're talking about. All we know is that 81% goes to the pundits. Uh, and of that 81%, 23% in pundit stipends and 20% in pundits in training. Um, so again, you might wonder at that point why more isn't spent on the pundits. If the churn rate is so high, why wouldn't they try to make it a more attractive proposition? And why do they keep having to spend 20% on pundits in training um, other than if the dropout rate is, is fairly phenomenal? Uh, the other area that actually claims the lion's share is 40% spent on construction of new Vastu campuses. Um, and you, you have to wonder why they're spending so much on new campuses when the conditions in existing campuses um, are so appalling. You will have seen these slides, I'm sure, from last year. And the thing is that to this year, these are more recent slides, it hasn't gotten any better. Now, a group of us approached Harris Kaplan about the conditions in the Brahmastan a couple of years ago. And his response was, with regards to the finances of the Maharishi Vedic Pundits program, the use of funds is closely monitored both by our own finance team and by the very renowned international accounting firm, Grant Thornton. Um, well, they are very renowned, but probably not for the reason that Harris Kaplan thinks. In 2019, um, the United Kingdom Financial Reporting Council called their work unacceptable, saying it was the worst performer of all UK major accounting firms. They were subsequently fined £3 million for misconduct, fined £2 million for ethical failures, criticized for failure to spot a 20 million pound accounting black hole and ordered to pay damages of 21 million to a former client after committing negligence, quote, of the utmost gravity. 
So personally, I wouldn't trust him to count my grandson's pocket money. The other group is the, um, the Vigilandir schools. Now, I hadn't realized until I checked them out that this was a franchise operation. So it's like McDonald's and Pizza Hut. They basically buy the Maharishi brand and then set up their schools. So, you know, obviously um, a nice little earner, as we say over here, but um, what about quality control? Well, I wasn't able to investigate all 153 schools, but a sample of six produced at random found the following, that they really were consistently in the bottom 20% of schools, according to a rating group called Best School Net in India. Um, you can see that they were regard they rank very low both in all India and on, on a local level. So these were um, these were the facilities at Bhopal, Jabalpur, and Dehradun. So just to drill down a little bit into that, there were little write-ups for some of these, and this is the Bhopal campus. So results are so bad that there are very few schools which are worse. Admission in this school shall be avoided at all costs. School teachers do not care much about teaching. Management does not know if school exists. And Dehradun was, if anything, even worse. Performance-wise, this school belongs in the category of worst schools in India. Students getting educated here shall kiss goodbye to their career. The bar cannot go down any further. We are not sure if teachers at all will come to classroom. Management is plain lazy and careless. And I think that what, what I take away from it at least is that both the ashrams and the schools reflect a lazy and appalling management structure. Uh, why people would want to continue to donate um, when this is the case is quite frankly beyond me. So the big question, where's the money Lebowski? 